Hi everybody, it's Pastor Eric and it is so good to be with you once again. And I have a topic I'm so glad to talk to you about. Uh, the title of the message of our time together today is He Wholly Followed the Lord. I'm speaking of Caleb, one of my favorite Bible characters. I think this will be a blessing to you. So let's get right into the Word of God. But first, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, our ears and eyes and hearts are open, our hands lifted to heaven. Speak, Father, pour out your spirit. Let all of your wisdom and all of your glory that comes out from Jesus Christ, let it settle in and on us. We are listening. Lead us in the way we ought to go. We are attentive to your word. We will listen. We will hear. We will do according to the commands that are given to us in the word that we hear. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Here we are, Lord. Amen. He wholly followed the Lord. Uh, I want to start off by reading to you from Joshua. It's uh, chapter 14, verses 6 through 15. It's a long reading, so stick with me. The children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the desert, in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakin were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kirjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. Let there be a blessing on the reading, the hearing, and mostly, beloveds, the doing of God's word. Amen? You know, in one of my favorite books, Fierce Conversation, uh, the author Susan Scott says this. She says, how you live your days is how you live your life. And we see that Caleb lived his days faithfully before the Lord, believing him at his word and doing and speaking accordingly. And that made a huge difference, the difference between him and all the other men of his generation. So let me ask you, especially the brothers, the men who are listening to me, how do you want to be remembered? That's the question that each of us are going to grapple with at one time in our life, at one point, and hopefully at this point. What would those who know you best say about you and the life you live? Most importantly, what would Jesus say? And since we will surely give an account for the lives that we live, what should our testimony be and how do we live in a way that will one day hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm sure that that's what the Lord said when he greeted Caleb on that day. Well done, good and faithful servant, because Caleb and those who knew him could say this about him, that he wholly followed the Lord. Now, Caleb was a man known for that main attribute, his dedication. To God. This was true of him as a young man, true of him all through his life, true of him in old age, to the point where he could say at 85, 
I am just as tough. I am just as tough physically. I'm just as tough mentally and emotionally as I was as a young man. And what a testimony. I'm not sure how true that was, whether he was as tough physically as he was some 40 years ago, but he was definitely spiritually in the same place that he was in the time when it really mattered, when he brought forth a report about the land that would have been an encouragement to the people of God had they listened, had they had the same heart that Caleb had, but they did not. And so, as you know, all of the men of Israel who entered the desert, when they came out of Egypt, all died in the desert. None of them crossed the Jordan into the promised land, except for two, and that's Joshua and Caleb, because they were two out of the 12 spies, the spied out the land at Moses' command, as we just read. They were the two that came back with a good report. You see, those who wholly follow the Lord have a good report because they see what's in front of them according to the promises of God, not to the problems that, that the circumstance might, might bring to mind. Not, they didn't focus on the obstacles. They didn't focus on the giants in the land. They didn't focus on how vast the land was and the cities in the land were fortified and the armies were great and larger than theirs. They didn't focus on any of those things. They knew that the Lord had promised this land to their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They believed that, and according to his faith, he spoke and he lived, and he was known. He was a man who wholly followed the Lord. Now the desert swallowed up men. It swallowed up an entire generation of men because desert experiences bring out what is really in us, and God is looking for faith. That is what God blesses. That is what God perpetuates. That is what God uh, multiplies. That is what God is looking to spread and to touch. And, to, and, and that is what God is looking for in his people. That is what Caleb possessed. That is what you and I are called to possess. Because what God loves, he proliferates. And he did so in Caleb to the point where Caleb, at, as an old man, was able to receive his inheritance and to receive it with joy and still had the hope and the strength of God's promise in him that he would conquer the land that was given to him. The land wasn't just given to him, it was given to him to conquer. And because he wholly followed the Lord, he had all the confidence in the world that he would conquer that land. Once again, the entire generation of men fell in the desert, but Joshua and Caleb. Are you a Joshua and are you a Caleb? If you are, it is because you have set yourself to wholly follow the Lord, to believe him for what he has said and what he has spoken about you and your life, the work you have given to do, and you will walk and you will prosper according to that anointing and according to that word. Uh, let me speak to you prophetically. You are Joshua and you are Caleb. And if you haven't up to this point, today is the day to make the decision, brother, to wholly follow the Lord. That's how we finish strong. That's how we complete the course. That's how we touch every base that God sets before us, holy believing and holy following the Lord. You know, when you, when you read the scriptures, there are those men and women who stand out uh, above everyone else. And it is because like Caleb, they are different than everyone else. They're not different than everyone else intrinsically. They're not better than anyone else. They just make better decisions than others. And the decision they make is to wholly follow God, to wholly believe in him. And one of the first um, people in the Bible that comes to mind when I think of those who wholly follow the Lord is Daniel. Now, the entire book of Daniel is founded on this one statement that comes early, early in, in, in the book. Daniel was one of the young captives of the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, he was set aside for service to the king. Well, one of the things that was required of them is that they would eat of the king's delicacies. But the scripture tells us in the first chapter of Daniel, early on, as I said, that he made a decision that he would not defile himself with the king of Babylon's delicacies. He would not break the dietary laws that God had given his people. And it wasn't so much about food, I don't believe. I believe it was about obedience and it was about relationship with God. 
He saw his adherence to the law of God as the stuff of relationship. He decided that he would not defile himself by eating the king's delicacies, by eating in a way that Jews were called not to eat by the law. But, and God gave him favor with the eunuch that was overseeing all uh, those young captives and allowed him to eat as a vegetarian, him and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whose names you might remember. And of course, after 10 days, uh, they were tested and they were healthier and stronger than all the others who did partake in the king's delicacies. That's what it means to wholly follow the Lord and to have God invest himself in that faith. And so Daniel, the entire Bible, the entire story of Daniel in the Bible is founded on his decision to wholly follow the Lord by not defiling himself. Then I think of Abraham. And Abraham was called to, to leave everything that he knew and everyone that he knew to go out to a place that he did not know where he was going, just following the voice and the promise of God who promised to be with him and who promised him that he was going to give, make him a father of nations. Now he, he became an old man and he and Sarah had had no children as you know, and yet and still he held on to the promises of God, became a friend of God. God called him his friend because he wholly followed the Lord. And today we're speaking of him because he wholly followed the Lord. And I think of David, uh, and you may know of him, that there's so much said about him in the scriptures. Jesus himself is called the son of David. And that is because of the, spirit, the spiritual inheritance which David was given. And, and God chose him and, and out, of the, out of the fields and, and, and took him from being a shepherd of his father's few sheep and made him a shepherd of Israel. And to this very day, we look to the Psalms, we look to David's life and his testimony. We look to his life and testimony because he wholly followed God. I think of Moses, uh, who wholly followed God, refusing to just fall in the lap of luxury of Egypt, which he could have well done because he was raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But he rejected that and chose, as the scripture says, to suffer affliction with the children of God instead of enjoying the passing pleasures of sin in Egypt. The scriptures tells, tells us that, that he forsook Egypt and he did not fear the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. You see, Moses wholly followed the Lord. And I think of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, a, a, another captive um, who, who was a, a servant of the king, of, of the Medes and the Persians, um, who asked the king to send him back to Jerusalem that he might rebuild the wall and, and rebuild the, the confidence and the worship in God's people in Jerusalem. They, they had, been, uh, had been so impoverished and, and they were in such terrible condition that it grieved his heart and he knew in his heart what the Lord wanted him to do, which was to go back to rebuild not only the walls of Jerusalem, but all that's encompassed by the walls of Jerusalem. And he did so. He wholly followed the Lord, so much to the point that he prayed twice in the book, said, Lord, remember me for my kindness to your people. Because he behaved in a way that was very different than the other governors that had been set over the people. Nehemiah, wholly followed the Lord. I think of Elijah and Elisha. Um, Elisha being a spiritual son of Elijah's and Elijah being a representative of all the prophets of the Old Testament. And Elisha coming up under him and continuing his ministry because he asked the Lord for, he asked Elisha for a double anointing, a double portion of the anointing that was on his life. And it wasn't so much that he was asking Elijah that I might do two times the things that you did or have twice as much success. That is not at all what he was saying. What he was asking for was the position of the firstborn. Because in the firstborn families of the day, the eldest son received a double portion of the inheritance. And Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's spiritual inheritance. And he received it because he wholly followed the Lord. And though there are many more to talk about, I want to talk about Ruth. Ruth had an opportunity to go back to her people. Uh, her mother-in-law set her free and, and, and gave her permission along with, along with uh, her other daughter-in-law. She gave, Naomi gave Ruth permission to go back to her people um, because their husbands had all died in Moab and Naomi was going back home. And Ruth said to her, as you might remember, I will not leave you. Don't even ask. I have, where you dwell, I will dwell. Where you live, I will live. Where you die, I will die. Don't bother 
asking me again because I will never leave you. Why? Because she wholly followed Naomi's God who became her God. Ruth, we're talking about her today because she wholly followed the Lord. When they talk about you at the end of your days, what will they be talking about? If people rightly assess the life that you live and the testimony that you have, will they be able to say, brothers, that he wholly followed the Lord, no matter which way the tides went, no matter which way the wind blew, he wholly followed the Lord. If you do so, you're uncommon because Jesus says the road to heaven is narrow and few find it. But one thing is true about those few, that they wholly follow the Lord. Now, I want to just make a few points here on what it means and some of the ramifications of wholly following the Lord. I think you'll find this edifying. Now, firstly, if you wholly follow the Lord, you will experience some loneliness, some exclusion. You'll be ostracized. There'll be conflict with those Christians, those believers who don't wholly follow the Lord. But you will triumph and you will see the Lord's salvation. Uh, the, the New Testament tells us very clearly, it paints a very clear picture about uh, the, the, the loneliness, the difficulty of the apostles. Um, their fierce determination to wholly follow God cost them everything. Uh, in, in some cases, it cost them their lives. In almost every case, it cost the apostles their lives to wholly follow God. But they did because they made up their mind. And they ev it even got to the point where they believed that the suffering uh, that they suffered was a blessing to them, that they were honored to be able to suffer for the name of the Lord. That is an attitude that only belongs to those who wholly follow the Lord. Now, if you wholly follow the Lord, this is a very, very good and sweet promise. Your vitality will remain and your faith will increase through the years. And I can prove that to you scripturally. <laughs> it says in the first Psalm, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delights in the law of the Lord. And in that law, he meditates day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that'll bring forth his fruit in its season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. See, that is you. That is me, because we wholly follow the Lord. The Lord has promised us that we will keep our spiritual vitality until the day that he takes us to be with him, that we will keep our fruitfulness, that, that the fruits of the Spirit will be born on our tree, the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-discipline. Those fruits will be ours because those are the fruits on our branches, the branches on whose, which whose leaves will never wither. Even in old age, beloveds, even like Caleb, here we will be able to say to the people of God, I have wholly followed the Lord. Hold on to that promise. It is a sweet one. Then if you wholly follow the Lord, you will see the fulfillment of his promises and his goodness in your life. One of my favorite verses in the entire scripture is out Psalm 27, 13. And this is David speaking. He said, I would have lost hope had I not known that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He had this hope in, in his lowest moments because I believe he wrote this in one of his lowest moments and David had some low moments. He wrote this by faith. He wrote this, he held on to this just as Caleb, just as Caleb, excuse me, when he came back and gave a report about the land in which they spied, he saw it by faith. And yes, he saw this was gonna be a great enterprise, it was gonna take a great deal of energy and the blessings and, 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 and the bounty of the Lord and able to, to be able to do this, but he saw it accomplished because he saw it by faith. And we see things by faith many times, most clearly, when things are the most difficult, because that's when we really, truly, truly need to exercise that faith. So David spoke this in probably one of his toughest times, just like Caleb spoke in a tough time, but because they both followed the Lord, 
they believed they would see the blessing of the Lord while they lived. And here is Caleb seeing God's blessing, receiving the inheritance that is his because he followed God wholly. Finally, if you follow the Lord wholly, you will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Ha, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a thing to look forward to. Those words being said to you when you stand before the Lord on that day when you give an account for your life, and we all will, may it be so that that's a glad day. And one of the ways we prepare for that day is according to the word of God and leading of the spirit, we let the Lord remove everything, everything which could one day be a burden to us and be something that God would have to judge. That's why the Lord gives us opportunities through conviction and, and through confession and repentance to come clean of, of, of anything that, that, that sets us apart from him. So that when we stand before him, he has nothing to censor and he has everything to smile about. And the only words that he speaks to us are those precious words, well done, good and faithful servant. Why? Because I, because you made the decision to wholly follow the Lord. Lastly, uh, these are some strange and difficult days. Uh, we're in circumstances that uh, none of us truly saw coming, but the Lord did. So those of us who are in the Lord are prepared. Uh, when we get to these times, we will find out whether or not we have been walking with God and wholly following him because even in these difficult times, we are still able to walk and prosper with him because he was God before the COVID-19 season. He'll be God during, he'll be God after. You and I are to wholly follow the Lord. Let us let's not fall into the trap of strange doing and strange times because I believe strange times bring out strangeness on some people. Let it not be said of you. Let strange times bring out faith in you. Let it bring out faithfulness. Let it bring out humility. Let it bring out obedience. Let it bring out a fierce, fierce um, determination to be in the word of God. May it bring out a, a, a fierce determination to walk humbly before the Lord God and his people, even in this strange and difficult day. Through the fiery trials, we find out who we really truly are. And just as Caleb once again was able to get through the difficulties of the moment and he got through it with faith and, 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 and acquired a sweet testimony about which we're still talking today, you are going to come through the season with a sweet testimony. You're going to come through victoriously. Uh, everything about you is going to be increased and blessed through the season because you wholly follow the Lord through the season. There's so many voices that are saying so many things and giving so many directions, but you have your eyes on the promise giver and the promise keeper. The Lord has spoken into your life and he has told you that you are called and set apart to him. So he will take you through the season, even the difficulty and the uncertainty of it, and he'll take you through it with a praise and a song and once again, a purified testimony. So keep your hands and hearts lifted to heaven. If you've been straying in your thinking and straying in your doing, right now is the time to get that before the Lord so that you can come before him clean and free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And the Lord has set you free that in these seasons, he will prosper you and bless you and keep you so that when the promise is procured, you and I are ready to dwell in it and dwell in it with wisdom and to dwell in it with, with strength and to dwell in it victoriously. That's my prayer for you, that you have made up your mind, even as I was speaking, more so than ever before, to be one of the few, many are called, few are chosen, one of the few who wholly, completely, without equivocation, follows the Lord. Beloved, let there be a blessing once again on the hearing and the receiving, mostly the doing of the word of God. Thank you so much uh, for spending some time with me today. Um, continue to stick with us and continue to follow along with us on our Facebook page and, and uh, our website. We try to keep all the information very current. We try to keep word and worship and praise, uh, plenty of it for you. Uh, we, we keep information and, and, and lessons for your children and your youth. Uh, and uh, I thank God that even though we're not meeting uh, in a building, that we are the church of Jesus Christ. 
and uh, and we are going to do our best to take advantage of all that this venue offers. Um, I'd also like to um, encourage you to, as you go to our, our Facebook page, that you not only like, but follow uh, the Father's House page, because that way we are sure to get you all the blessings and information which we put on that page, and uh, we're trying our best to keep it coming. Uh, thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for your faithfulness, uh, continuing to give as you have. Um, there are opportunities and, and there's instruction for online giving on our Facebook page and our website. Uh, thank you so much also for sticking with me in my daily devotional, my daily dose of courage. I believe it's a blessing to wake up in the morning or sometime during the day, pull yourself apart. And uh, if you'll walk with me and, and, and be with me and think with me through the things of God, it will help you wholly follow the Lord your God. Once again, God bless you. Look forward to talking to you again this coming Sunday and reminding you that on June 7th, uh, we're going to have a Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Zoom church service. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing your faces on the screen. Lord God, we came to you for grace. We came to you according to grace. And we were blessed in your presence according to that same grace. My prayer is and continues to be that everything that I receive from you, Father, let it be according to that grace. My very salvation is according to grace through faith. And I pray that every blessing, um, every moment, um, all of my relationship with you would be walked out according to grace and according to my faith. Increase my faith, Lord. Increase the faith of all those who hear my word today and receive our worship. We love you. We thank you.